Thanks for joining today. Yeah, so let me start out with some some housekeeping, and then I'll introduce myself, and we'll get started with the uh, with the session. So, got to start with Safe Harbor. You guys are all used to this um, forward looking statements, no promises, all that kind of good stuff. So, you guys, you guys are used to that. So, I want to mention that this is a webinar that's in a you know in a series of of, of interactions we do with 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 our customers. So, you can either click on the uh, uh, on the code, or you can look at the menu. We're also going to post um, the the schedule in today's chat. So, you know, we'll get you connected with the rest of the series of, of meetups and webinars so that you can take advantage of all of those. Just want to highlight that. And then just basic housekeeping. We're going to use Q&A for questions. Um, so please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to post any questions you have. We'll, we'll try to mark which of those we're going to answer live and which ones we'll, we'll follow up with. Um, we'll definitely share this recording, post it on the community out there, and then hopefully you'll fill out a short survey after we're, we're finished so that we can, uh, we can get your feedback. So just the kind of basic admin here. So let's, let's go ahead and get into it. So who am I, first of all? So uh, I'm George Bensel. I'm your host today. Uh, I'm a success architect and value strategist with ServiceNow. Um, been with the company for, for several years. Um, that's me on my uh, on my deck in, in Pittsburgh, where I live. I've been with ServiceNow, like I mentioned, for several years, um, but I have been in your shoes. I, I was a customer. Um, I ran service management for a, a Fortune 100 company for several years, and I think I saw my first demo for ServiceNow in, in 2010, so quite a while ago. And when I saw the platform demoed, you know, my first reaction is I would like to buy that. Um, but then it took me a couple of years to get the, the business case together to, 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 to convince my senior leadership. I had an uphill battle with the CIO at the time to, to get the purchase made. Finally did get it, get it made and rolled out several products successfully, um, built a, build a COE um, and, and a program. Eventually drank so much of the Kool-Aid that I came over to ServiceNow several years ago. And since I've been here, I've mostly been consulting with customers around um, platform planning, strategy, governance, building a center of excellence, um, road mapping, all those sorts of things. But most recently, um, I joined a small team of, of value strategists, and we've been focused on building, um, building basically our value management capabilities and value journey capabilities within Impact, our post-sales customer success product. And that's where we're going to focus today around the value journey and impact and specifically around the value blueprint and, and what that is. So just a little bit of intro around, around me. So let's get into it. The flow for the, the webinar today, we'll start out with why would you, why would a customer want to embark on that impact value journey? We'll talk about why we're putting so much focus into that. Then we'll get into what's a value blueprint. How does that fit into that overall value journey? We'll do, I'll talk to you about a customer case study. Um, some, some real life example of, of how a customer kind of did this from a process perspective. I'll play a demo. Um, that'll show you how everything is manifested online with, with an impact. And then we'll do a wrap up and Q&A and answer some questions. And we should have a, a good bit amount of time for, uh, for that. So that's the flow for today. I'm not going to do an impact sales pitch. This is really focused on that value journey with an impact as a foundational component. So why, why is the impact value journey so important? Why do we think it's so important for our customers? We, we did a lot of customer research, post-sales, and, and two major themes emerged. One is that customers want to get, they want to know that they got the value from their investment, and they want help in getting that value faster, which is, which is understandable. But more than that, they want to know how can ServiceNow enable that that value achievement. So how can best practices and advisory and what good looks like be brought to the table to help that value achievement happen faster? So those are kind of the two big themes. And that's why we've been putting a lot of focus into this with an impact about creating that value journey and making it automated and, and easier for you as a customer. So when we say value journey, you know, what am I talking about? We think of it really in four components. First of all, aligning on business objectives, outcomes, metrics, and I'll talk a lot about that today. But then we think about the journey as the challenges that you're facing as a customer, you know, what's preventing you from achieving those objectives? 
then how do ServiceNow capabilities in the platform address those challenges? And at the end of the day, how do we measure that value realization? How do we measure the dollars, the time saved that we achieved you know, throughout that journey? So what I'm going to describe to you today, our value management framework speaks to all of those elements of trying to tie those together into an evergreen, refreshing journey for, for you to, to go through as a customer. So those are the components that we think of. And I'm going to break it down a, a little bit more in the next couple of slides. When we think about the journey, we really think of it in these three phases. And these are screens you're going to see, screenshots from Impact that you'll also see in the demo later. But that first phase is all about aligning on objectives, outcomes, and metrics. That's the blueprint itself. Then we get into actively tracking progress against those metrics and outcomes. Uh, more um, impact screenshots there, and we'll show you some of this later in the demo, as I mentioned, but showing you tracking against those, uh, um, against those objectives. And then finally, culminating in value reporting and showing, hey, you know, the, the, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is this. We realize this much value in terms of dollars from, from, those, from, those, um, from those implementations. So it's those, those kind of phases within impact. I'm going to break it down even further and make a couple other points on this slide. First of all, that value blueprint phase, which is that alignment phase, has kind of two aspects to it. First of all, the qualitative side. So that's the objectives, outcomes, and metrics. And we'll show what a blueprint looks like a little later. And I'll explain what I mean by objective outcome and metric because those terms and KPIs and OKRs get used interchangeably a lot. But then there's a second phase to the value blueprint, and that's the more quantitative phase. And that's around baselines and targets and actually collecting the data that enables this whole, this whole journey. So, you know, we're talking about getting a historical baseline that, that really gives us an anchor point to compare to in the future. We're talking about setting realistic targets for achievement. And then a, a quick digression on the, the data. We've got to get the data to look at your actuals. And, you know, we do get some telemetry data from your instances if you've, if you've okayed that. Um, but as you guys know, as customers, you know, not everything is always configured out of the box. And, you know, I, like I said, I was a customer, so very familiar with this. So it's not always easy for us to just pull the data from your instance. So we've been creating a lot of tools and documentation to help that data collection go easier. Um, we've got all kinds of documentation on where the data resides, how to build a report or dashboard to grab it. And most excitingly, actually this fall, we're going to be coming out with some store apps, some actual content packs that you can download from the store that will set up, that once you set them up, you'll have the dashboard and it'll pull the data in for the value blueprint. So we're going to automate this as much as we can. And in the future, we're actually thinking of, you know, APIs between you and Impact and actually pulling it in completely turnkey, but that's a little bit future right now. Then that moves into that outcomes performance, those quarterly check-ins on trending, culminating in that value report that I mentioned when we're looking at dollars. And I also want to make the point that we're, this is inherently connected thematically to the now value journey, the overall customer journey that we want all ServiceNow customers to go through, which is, and you guys have probably seen the now value wheel on many ServiceNow marketing slides, all about envisioning where you want to go, that's your objectives, all about creating that value through the implementations and your deployments, validating it, measuring it, did you get there, what did you get? And then being able to tell a value story in the champion phase, do we have a narrative we can tell collectively around the value achieved? So, you know, these, these processes are inherently tied together. You can see that the same kind of thinking goes into, goes into both. So I want to stop and do a poll right now after I did a little explanation there, because I'm really interested in how many of you guys are doing this now in some way, shape, or form. Um, so the first I'm basically interested in, are you tracking business objectives? Are you tracking the achievement of your outcomes You know, in this value journey? Is it driving your roadmap? So the one is, number one means, hey, we're doing it. We're thinking about both the qualitative and the quantitative that I just talked about. It's routine for us. It's standard. We're doing it either with ServiceNow or outside of ServiceNow. So just very interested in, yes, it's, it's completely normal business as usual for us. Two, we're doing it, but maybe not as systematically or in a 
methodological way. Three would be no, but we're, we're talking about this. We want to do it. We, we wanted to get into goals, vision. Um, we want to go this this direction. Or four, we haven't even thought about our world this way yet. We're we're not ready for that. Um, you know, this is completely new new thinking for us. So interested in in what bucket you guys fall into in terms of thinking about a value journey with your service now programs. If you guys can take a minute and and, and answer that, I would I would love that. And then our our friendly host will jump in later and let me know how you guys responded and we can uh we can talk about that a little. So cool. Appreciate you guys responding to the poll. That'll that'll help me think about my audience. So let's Let's dig into the, the blueprint a little more. What's important about this slide, I've already talked about, you know, kind of alignment, monitoring, measuring, you guys have kind of gotten a feel of the flow here. But the important part of this slide is that for your impact squad, understanding your objectives and your vision is what enables us to make the blueprint actionable. So it enables us to be able to give you recommendations. So those recommendations could be anything from advisory interactions, uh, training, they could be what we call expert connects, or they could be what we call accelerators, which are like tune up your virtual agent or jumpstart your CMDB, or if there's some, you know, some specific focus area that we're, we're helping you. Um, I can tell you from my own being a success architect, which I still am, um, my customer that I work with very closely is a, a household name, Pharma, that you guys all, all know very well. But um, we've recently done a bunch of accelerators for them based off their value blueprint. So they're thinking about what are my goals and objectives, and then we're able to make recommendations to them about how what can speed them up and acceleration of value around those objectives. So the, the blueprint needs to be extremely actionable. And what that enables us to do at the end of the day is communicate success, tell the story around the value report and the narrative around where we got to together. So I want to make the point that 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 VB that value blueprint is extremely actionable. So let's explain exactly what a what a blueprint is, and I'll show you an example in in the case study. But we're really talking about a hierarchy here of vision and strategy, and then objective, outcome, and underpinning metric. And if I you know define those, the objective and outcome is the result the company aims to achieve, like scaling customer ops. The operational outcome is that measurable statement. And the metric is that signal of success that's actually measuring the achievement of the outcome and the, and, and the objective. But I want to make the point here also that we break our framework down into growth, cost, and risk objectives, because these this, this value blueprint in our framework is really business and value oriented. It's not so operational. We're really thinking about is moving the needle here driving revenue? Is it reducing cost? Is it reducing risk? We're really thinking at that executive level at, at the kind of the business strategy of, uh, of what the platform is, is doing for you as a customer. So I want to make a point there that you know these are value metrics that we're that we're talking about here. And the question always comes up, why should I use ServiceNow's value blueprint and value framework? I'm already tracking lots of metrics. And the point here is that we've developed these metrics and outcomes from thousands of customer engagements and successful transformations. So that's kind of point one. You know, we've done a lot of the homework for you and thinking about what you need to measure. But maybe even just as importantly, I'll say, we've already we've also thought about which value enhancing capabilities drive progress in a certain metric, can move the needle on a certain metric. Like if you're interested in reducing cases or incidents, you know, maybe it's virtual agent or process optimization or predictive intelligence. So we've kind of done that mapping of capability to metric so that we can think about, you know, how to how to help you progress toward those those outcomes and and, and objectives that you guys are, are are driving toward. So and I want to make the point one more time. These metrics are extremely value oriented. They're all driving toward time saved, money saved, risk avoided. And that's what we, we normally see as a difference between our metrics and some of the operational metrics that I used to use as a customer too. We're much more kind of managing my day-to-day -day operations. 
versus manage, being able to tell a, a money or a time saved story. So hopefully that, that makes sense. So let's, let's dive into a case study. Um, took an example of some work that an impact squad did with a large retailer. You guys have probably brought, bought clothes or something else from, from these guys. Um, they're, they're global, thousands of, of, of retail stores. And they were undergoing um, an HR transformation. And they, they had done a very good job of laying out their vision and strategy. And I'll show, I'm showing that here. They were talking about strengthening operational excellence and the end user experience you know, through automation and, and digital support. Moving their employees sat up and their experience metrics up, and they wanted to standardize kind of compliance across the enterprise, kind of standard support across their 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 global their global theaters. And we helped them think about business objectives, and they wanted to put them in their own language. And these this is what they came up with. So it was deliver on end user experience improvements with industry leading capabilities and automation. Include, optimize their HR service delivery, kind of their back office, and then also think about that service delivery compliance and standardization across how they do case management. So that, that was really how they went from a vision to a business objective. And it was, it was easy to translate this into our value blueprint because we're pretty comfortable with why customers buy our HR product. It, this matched up really well with, with some of our objectives and our framework. So it was easy to translate this into our value blueprint for our HR product, which is what I'm showing you now. And this customer was extremely focused on case management, shifting work left, um, optimizing their, their delivery you know, within their, their support centers. So very interested in case management. They weren't deploying onboarding. They weren't deploying lifecycle events yet within HR. So they went through our menu of outcomes and metrics here, and they picked the ones that, that, that resonated with them. You know, in their case, it was about the number of HR cases closed. You see the, the top metric up there. It was about the efficiency and shifting left. So it was about HR um, level one versus level two, moving work, you know, as much as possible to level one. And it was about the efficiency of the agent. So the ratio of case to agent. So they were very focused on those types of metrics. Then the next conversation with them was about baselines. I didn't plug in their baseline targets here, their baselines and targets here, but they did a good job of going back and getting a historical baseline to say, you know, to kind of get away from any risk of seasonality or anything like that. They took a year's worth of, of baseline data and then they set targets against each of those, those metrics that they picked. And important to mention that the targets really depend on how aggressive you want to be within a given process and metric. If you have a really mature process, maybe you wanna dial the, the target back a little bit. If you've already done a lot of automation and digitization, maybe you haven't done any automation in a given process yet, you wanna be more aggressive about the target. These are just some standard ones that we've seen as kind of middle ground for most customers, but totally up to, you know, up to us and the customer, and mostly you to figure out what's reasonable and realistic from a target perspective. So that's what, that's what the entire HR blueprint looks like, our standard one. And then this customer picked from these, you know, and then, like I mentioned, did the, the baselines and the targets. But what was really cool about this is that they made this actionable. And I'll show you a couple slides that show how they, how they made it actionable. So the next thing they did was they thought about some recommended resolutions is what they call them. And these are related to all the way back when I was talking about the components of the value journey. I think of these as sort of their solutions, but also kind of their answers to some challenges they had. Um, so they went through a process of t-shirt sizing some of these ideas they had about challenges and capabilities. And then they thought about priority and then they voted on these. And over on the right side of the, the slide there, you see some of their stakeholder votes. They were voting from a, a region perspective on, hey, what should we do first or first or second? And, you know, how many people were in favor of this one, this one, this one? So they use this kind of thought process to think about challenges, capabilities, and, and priorities. And so that was great. They did this all from a kind of offline, you know, uh, process perspective. But then what they translated this to, this to 
was a capabilities map combined with a roadmap. So if you take a look at this slide, there's a lot on this slide, so I'll try to explain it. First of all, they were thinking about HRSD Pro versus Enterprise. So the green blue boxes are what's in Pro and what they owned. And then the black boxes are what's in Enterprise they were considering. And then if you look at the blue font beside the boxes, that's what they've currently deployed. They had currently deployed. And then the black boxes are what they hadn't deployed yet. So from a PowerPoint perspective, a slide perspective, they were able to bump up those recommended resolutions, you know, based on their priorities against um, some of these capabilities, given what they owned, their entitlements, and then make decisions about roadmap. You know, what, what are our priorities? Where, where do we want to go from a crawl, walk, run, fly perspective? So their thought process was really nice, thinking about going all the way from vision, objectives, outcomes, metrics, into challenges, capabilities, and then all the way into roadmap based on their entitlements and their capabilities map. And then what you're going to see when I, when I start the demo is the fact that all of this could have been done within impact, where we've got basically a product built to combine all these, all these thought processes and this journey into, uh, into an online experience that's really, really friendly for customers. So I'll show you that in a minute. So hopefully that all made sense. That was one customer's approach to kind of thinking through that, that value journey. So let me show you this, this demo. And then I'll come back and I'll reinforce some things about it. And then we'll wrap up and get into some, some, some Q&A. So let me, uh, let me get out of here and play the demo for you. Let's take a look at this company led by the CIO, Lara Puvi. She has successfully led digital transformations in the past for improving employee productivity and a move to the cloud. Lara has a new Dream Big initiative focusing on transforming the employee experience, which will be supported by her platform owner, Jackie Gutierrez. For Jackie to successfully execute Lara's vision, she will need a personalized experience that aligns to Lara's strategic objectives, business outcomes, and key success metrics. Jackie and Lara have mapped out their Dream Big initiative to drive their employee experience transformation. Jackie and every other Impact client go through a Valley Blueprint exercise, where they map the executive vision to an operating model that informs the strategic, operational, and tactical layers of their organization to ensure every team focuses on each step to support their executive vision. In this self-service experience, Jackie can select the ServiceNow products that her company owns. Impact will then recommend business objectives, operational outcomes, and success metrics tied to these products, and Jackie can handpick any of these recommendations. Important to also mention that the ServiceNow Impact Squad is always a part of this process, helping customers set up the value blueprint in Impact. Objectives and outcomes can be edited to correspond with internal nomenclatures and messaging, and Jackie can review the details of each outcome and learn about the core capabilities. In certain cases, the Impact Squad can set up custom objectives and outcomes for customers with specific needs. Lastly, she can review their selection before finalizing the Valley Blueprint. And we'll now see a list of objectives and outcomes. Jackie can now dive into the employee experience digital transformation, review operational outcomes, make updates, and start initiatives that will help satisfy this objective. The Impact Squad will work closely with their customer to ensure that all initiatives are linked back to business objectives, which means Lara and Jackie will have a clear line of sight on which actions directly lead to progress on objectives and outcomes. For the first time ever, Jackie has a clear view into all of her ServiceNow entitlements, specifically what has been adopted, currently being implemented, and not yet adopted so she can identify new capabilities that will further support Lara's Dream Big Initiative vision. Jackie's partner, who is supporting her implementation, also values the capability map, as it provides the visibility they need to support upcoming discussions on delivering future innovation. Jackie's company purchased several ServiceNow products, but she needs guidance on which ones to implement first. Through the product adoption roadmap, Jackie sees a recommended sequence for implementation 
for each product is mapped to a specific business objective. Through this prescriptive guidance, Jackie will be able to accelerate Lara's dream big vision. Not only will the Impact Squad provide recommendations to Jackie, but the ServiceNow Impact AI experience will provide guidance to deploy future innovation. Each of these assets that are created at the beginning of Jackie's impact journey train the personalization engine to further refine future recommendations. Each impact recommendation includes information on why this is important for Jackie and notes from her squad. Through ServiceNow Impact, Jackie and Lara are able to define the operational metrics that matter to them and track their improvement over time. They will meet with their squad to discuss a given quarter's performance by comparing actual data against operational trends. This discussion helps customers understand their progress towards their overarching goals. Now let's see what happens at the year mark. Jackie and Lara can also visualize the overall business value that their company received from their ServiceNow investment, organized by business objective, product, and point in time. In this view, they can see the value realized through HR in the past year and make any necessary adjustments to their value blueprint as they achieve their business objectives. Today, by delivering a personalized experience, Impact is helping Jackie and other Impact customers by accelerating time to value and increasing their overall ROI from their investment and service now, amplifying the expertise of their teams with experts on demand, and adopting software products that generate more value swiftly. Super. All right. So I'm going to take a moment, kind of reinforce some of the reinforce some of what you saw from a, from an online impact perspective. So hopefully it came through that we started with the value blueprint, and you saw a self service experience. Usually in real life, that that process would most likely happen in consultation with your impact squad. And I think you know we only set up one objective, one outcome, and one metric. Chances are, in actuality, if we were really doing this we'd have a couple of objectives and probably several outcomes and associated metrics um, is typical for, for a blueprint. But then it moved through into that capabilities map where you see what you're entitled to, what you've deployed, what you haven't deployed. So you've got that view of that. Everyone's got that line of sight to that. And usually that view is, is, is appreciated by both the executive and the platform owner. I mean, everyone likes that view because then Every, we've got it in one place, you know, what you, what you, what, what you own and what, you, what you've done so far. Then moving into recommendations and road mapping, and then that quarterly interaction where we're talking about trends. And that's what helps us make more recommendations based off, you know, trends going a positive direction, trends going a negative direction, you know, whatever's going on there, we can, we can make those right recommendations. Culminating in that value report at the end of the day, like I said, the, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is, hey, we've, we've provided this much um, monetization, you know, dollars, dollars created in a, um, you know, in a monetized view in that value report. So hopefully that flow made sense. And it also made sense that, you know, everything you saw in that case study slides I showed you is now available in, in one place at impact, that whole value journey. So hopefully that, that resonated. So a couple of um, wrap up slides. And then we'll jump into, into Q&A. So first wrap-up slide is this one. And I'm sure you guys are already thinking this, but this does require a partnership from, from you, the, the customer. You know, you have to define that vision and strategy. You have to work with your impact squad to align on those objectives, outcomes, metrics. We have to partner to make sure we're gathering the data, you know, in an accurate fashion so we can do that, that trending and measurement. So that does take a commitment of, of resources, time, and, and sponsorship. But hopefully you're seeing that the benefit of it is, is, is worth, the, uh, worth the investment. So I want to make this point strongly that this is a, a definitely a collaboration between, between Impact and you. And, and why, you know, that benefit I'm talking about, customers who, who really do sink their teeth into this value journey achieve, achieve their objectives faster, they achieve greater ROI versus peers, they get that executive buy-in. They can tell that executive story around value for platform expansion purposes, and they can prioritize really well. So at the end of the day, it's enabling the achievement of those strategic business objectives via the right capabilities, and then the tracking operationally and from a business value perspective, so we know what value we're getting from the platform. 
So that was all the that that was all the slide presentation stuff and demo. A um, couple of notes as we as we finish up here. Just some notes. We'll, we'll get this posted on the community, but there is an impact community out there that you can you can certainly take advantage of. Always about now learning. Now learning is is certainly learning credits are a part of impact. And if expert services are needed, I was just talking about actual configuration. That's getting into the expert services space. There's a solution brief here. You can you can take a look at too if uh, if real um, expert services are needed. And I think that's it. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate the attendance today.